This time we will have presentations of Common Core in the 21st Century Learning at Anna Kyle Elementary School students Gino Jimenez, Justin Lundberg, Lacira Masson, and Jasmine Hare. And if I tore up your names, <laughs> forgive me. Good evening, Superintendent Corey and Governing Board Trustees. I am Gino Jimenez, a fifth grade student from Anna Kyle Elementary. I am Justin Lundberg, a fifth grade student from Anna Kyle Elementary. I am Jasmine Hare, a fifth grade student from Anna Kyle Elementary. I am Larissa Maassin, also a fifth grader from Anna Kyle Elementary. We are all students in Ms. Hirschma's fifth grade class where we use our iPads as constructional tools all day at school and at home. First off, we would like to thank you for the opportunity to represent Anna Kyle No Excuses University Elementary School to present some of our Common Core aligned instructional practices and how we use technology as a tool to support our implementation. We would also like to share how we have been using Edmodo as a social communication tool to share and provide constructive responses to our fellow University of Michigan Wolverines on each other's work. Edmodo provides us a safe and easy way to connect and collaborate with our classmates online. Through Edmodo, we share content, access homework, post questions, and receive school notices. We also use it to build our classroom community by sharing about our lives outside of school, as well as sharing our academic creations. We have been working on using different strategies to solve multiple digit multiplication word problems. Our teacher learned some of these strategies through attending workshop and site professional development offered by the UC Davis Math Project. We have used place value charts, bar models, area diagrams, and we have connected all of these strategies to the standard algorithm. In doing so, we have used a couple of different applications on our iPad, including Notability, Edge of Creations, Show Me, and ScreenChomp in order to share our learning and explain which strategies we are using with our classmates via Edmodo. Now we would sh like to share a few of our lessons we have created and shared with our classmates on Edmodo, where we are using a variety of strategies to explain how we solved our word problem. After watching, we will be happy to entertain and respond to questions. You're wrong for that. Today, we will connect area diagrams and the distributive property to partial products of the standard algorithm without renaming. General admission to the American Museum of Natural History is $19. If a group of 125 students visit the museum, how much will the group's tickets cost? So, now we are, we are going to do their area model. 10 times 100 equals 1,000. 10 times 20 equals 200. 10 times 5 equals 50. 9 times 100 equals 900. 9 times 20 equals 180. And 9 times 5 equals 45. Now we need to add the 1,000 plus 200 plus 50 equals 1,250. 900 plus 180 plus 45 equals 1,000, 1,125, and now we need to add them up, 5, 7, 3, and 2, and the answer is 2,375, now we are going to do the standard algorithm, 9 times 5 equals 45, 9 times 2 plus 4 equals 22, 9 times 1 equals 1 plus 2 equals 11. Now we need to put an X because we are in the 10th place. And erase the 1 to group here. 1 times 5 equals 5. 1 times 2 equals 2. And 1 times 1 equals 1. Now we need to add them up. 5, 7, 3, and 2. And we got the same answer with the area model and standard algorithm. We also got the same numbers. My name's Justin. Thank you for watching.
Today's objective is connect area diagrams and the distributed property to partial products of the standard algorithm without renaming. Scientists are creating a material that may replace damaged cartilage and human joints. This hydrogel can stretch to 21 times its original length. If a strip of hydrogel measures 3 and 2 tenths centimeters, what would its length be when stretched to capacity? So 30 times 20 equals 600. 20 times 2 equals 40. 30 times 1 equals 30. 1 times 2 equals 2. So 60, 600 plus 40 equals 640. And 30 plus 30 plus 2 equals 32. Add them all together. And that would equal 67 and 2 tenths. So then 2 times 1 equals 2. 3 times 1 equals 3. You could put a 0 or an X. I prefer an X. So then 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 2 equals 6. Add those decimals. Add them all together. And that would equal the same answer. And they're the same thing. And the answers are the same thing too. Thanks for watching. Here are a few comments that my classmates have posted on Edmodo about my video. I like how you were explaining. A nice job, Larissa. I like how you did the area model and the algorithm. Subin even wrote, great job. I like the way you demonstrated your work. Awesome. At this time, we would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, yes. I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a question, but I just want uh, everyone to hear one of the statements that was made. Um, we're going to connect the area diagram and the distributive property to partial products of the standard algorithm without renaming. <laughs> No, I don't have any questions. <laughs> Board members, I'm sure that you may have a question. I... I don't have a question. I just think that was pretty nice what they just did. <laughs> and, and pretty interesting to take, an, uh, take a project and be able to show how to complete it two different ways and using your, your, your brain to be able to say, I can do it this way or I can do it this way and I get the same answer. Congratulations. I wouldn't have known how to do it. Before you go, could you remind our board what grade you're in? Fifth. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. And we also want to acknowledge our principal, uh, Mr. Kornblum, our assistant principal, Mr. Phillips, and their teacher, Ms. Horsba. Thank you. Very, very good. And if you remember, someone was worried about the Common Core not being rigor rigorous yeah. enough. Right. If you recall that. So I think they proved their point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yes.